We've now looked at why, how radian measure is defined. So everything you were able to do with degrees, using trigonometric functions in degrees, you can now do with radian measure. I'm just going to touch on some of the things that you've done with degrees, just to show you how to look at it in terms of radian measure. So the first thing is just finding the value of a trigonometric function of an angle. Now, if you take out your calculator, somewhere at the top of your calculator, it says degrees, DEG or DRG. You never actually looked at it because you've only worked in degrees. Now, what you need to see is how to change the mode of your calculator to radians. I'm going to leave that for you. You can figure out how to do that. But at the top of your screen, it should say radians when you're using radians. When you go back to degrees, it should, you must change it back to degrees. So please pay attention to which mode your calculator is in. So if your calculator is in radian mode, you simply type in sine 2 pi over 3, and you should get root 3 over 2. Similarly, type in cos of minus 5 pi over 6, and you should get minus root 3 over 2. Tan of 3 pi over 2. Well, your calculator is going to tell you that's an error, but the answer isn't error. What do we know about tan? We know tan is asymptotes. Now, my tan function, if I do a rough sketch, it looks like this. It's got some asymptotes and it carries on. Now, the asymptotes are at 90 degrees and 270 degrees and minus 90 degrees. But now we're in terms of radians. So, no, our asymptotes are at minus pi over 2, pi over 2, 3 pi over 2. So, when we look at tan of 3 pi over 2, we see it's undefined. All right. Well, what about cos of 5? Now, now you must start paying attention. There's no pi symbol there, but that doesn't mean it's not radians. It's just that the angle size is the number 5. So the arc length divided by the radius of that angle is 5. So if it says cos 5 degrees, then it's different. Now, if you're used to working with degrees and you sometimes left that symbol off, now it makes a difference if you don't have that symbol. So that symbol makes a big difference, that unit of that angle. So cos of 5, if you type in cos of 5, you'll get an irrational number, so you'll have to round it off. It's about 0.284. Tan of minus 12 is about 0.636. And sine of 1 is about 0.841. So that's using your calculator to calculate the trigonometric function of the angle. So let's talk about the sketches. We've quickly looked at the sketch of tan, but let's look at sine and cos in a bit more detail. If I sketch y equal to 3 sine 2x, now we're looking, thinking in terms of radian measure now. Now we know the shape of sine, so I'm going to start with the shape, and I'm just going to draw one full wave. You can carry on in both directions, depending on how much you want to draw. We know the amplitude is 3. The amplitude is still 3, even if I'm working in radians. Now, that 2x, what does that mean? That means my period is halved. Now, what is the period of sine? If you think back of degrees, the period of sine x is 360 degrees, so it's half that. Now, my period is 2 pi, so it's half that. So, it's pi. So, it takes pi, and that's radians. That's the distance it takes to draw one full wave. You can also think of the 2x. It means you can fit two waves in where you used to fit in one wave. You used to fit one wave into 360 degrees. Now you can fit two waves in. And we know it's nice and symmetric. We know that if the full period is pi, that one's pi over 2. And then we've got pi over 4 and pi, 3 pi over 4. So that is the sketch. Now, depending on what the questions say, I wasn't too detailed. I just want to get a rough idea. But this, you know, this wave carries on in both directions in the same pattern. So let's look at the next one. What about cosine? This is negative cosine. Now we know what cos of x looks like. Now the negative will be flipped around. So one full wave will look like this. The amplitude is 2. So we've got 2 up there, 2 minus 2 there. Now what we need to find is the period. So the period is normally 2 pi, but now I divide it by a third, which gives me 6 pi. Or you can think of, I can only fit a third of the graph in the same size where I used to fit in a whole graph. So I need 6 pi to fit in the whole graph. So that's 6 pi, halfway is 3 pi, halfway of that is 3 pi over 2, and then 
that distance between 3 pi and 6 pi is 9 pi over 2. Because all those distances are the same. And this graph also carries on in both directions. So you've got to start thinking of working in terms of radian measure rather than degrees. You cannot keep converting. But once you do work through a lot of exercises, you will get into that habit. So let's take a look. At calculating the angle. Now I've got the ratio. I'm given sine of an angle is 1. What is the angle? Now what you need to recall when you did trigonometry, solving trig fu uh, functions or trig equations, that that answer is not just unique. There's not just one answer for that. We can quickly look at the graph of sine. How many places if I draw sine of theta? If that is theta and that's y, how many angles has sine of that angle equal to 1? It's an infinite. It keeps going on in both directions. I'll keep getting angles for which sine of that angle is 1. So there's an infinite number of angles. But what do they look like? Well, I know the first one is going to be, that's at 90 degrees. So in this case, it's pi over 2. So I know my angle theta is pi over 2, and I didn't use a calculator. I prefer to use the sketch for these. For the next two, we'll use a calculator. So, theta is pi over 2, but it's not just pi over 2, it's pi over 2 plus and minus full wave. So, it's pi over 2 plus some multiple of a full period, which is 2 pi. And that k can be any integer, meaning positive, negative whole numbers. Now, if you wanted to use a calculator, if you type on your calculator second function sine of 1, it'll give you pi over 2. So, it gives you one of the answers. You must generate the rest of them. All right, let's look at the next one. Cos of theta is equal to minus root 3 over 2. Now, there's a couple of ways of doing this. So you need to look at the technique that you use to solve trig equations when you use degrees and replicate the same technique. I'm going to show you one technique where we look at the reference angle. If I look at cos, cos is negative. If I look at the Cartesian plane, cos is negative in the second and the third quadrant. If I look at the reference angle, that is that angle. My reference angle is over here. That's theta r and that's theta r. So what is that angle and what is that angle? Those are the angles I'm looking for. But let's first find the reference angle. So the reference angle we get with the calculator. So on the calculator, second function cos of root 3 over 2. I'm not worried about the minus at this stage. Don't, the minus just gives me the position in this technique. So second function cos of root 3 over 2 gives me pi over 6. So that's my angle. That is 30 degrees, but we're not thinking in terms of the degrees. We're thinking in terms of radians. So I've got pi over 6. So that means my angle theta, I've got two options. It's 180 degrees or pi minus pi over 6 or pi plus pi over 6. And not just that, plus any multiple of 2 pi. where k is any integer. So pi minus pi over 6 is 5 pi over 6, pi plus pi over 6 is 7 pi over 6. So those are the two angles plus full circles or full waves added to those angles. Right, the next one, tan of theta is minus 1. Now your theta, if you think of tan, tan is negative. In two places, tan is negative. In the second, it's positive in the third, negative in the second and the fourth quadrant. You can look at it in terms of the two quadrants, or you can think of it in terms of the period just being pi. But I'm going to just use 2 pi, because if we do the same for sine, cos, and tan, then we at least know we're going to remember it. So my reference angle, I get that by second function tan of 1, and that gives me pi over 4. So my two options for theta, it's either pi minus pi over 4 plus k times 2 pi or my angle is 2 pi minus pi over 4 plus k times 2 pi. All right, so you can simplify those. Just take note, if I look at an angle that goes in this direction and ends there, that's the 2 pi minus pi over 4, so that's 7 pi over 4 plus k times 2 pi. And these, or all of them, k is an integer. If I look at 7 pi over 4, 
that's exactly the same angle as this one. All right? Or not the same angle, it ends in the same place. So whether I call it 7 pi over 4 or minus pi over 4, they end at the same place. They're not the same angle because the one's positive and the one's negative, but they do have the same terminal, terminal side. So you could have gone in that direction as well. All right. So let's get a bit more specific on this last three questions. Let's say we're looking for the angle in the fourth quadrant for which sine of theta is equal to 1 over root, minus 1 over root 2. So I know sine is negative in the fourth quadrant, so that's good. So I'm looking for an angle in the fourth quadrant for which sine of that angle is minus 1 over root 2. So if I find the reference angle, so you, got, you ignore the sine, the minus, so it's just sine inverse, second function sine of 1 over root 2, you will get pi over 4. All right. So what is this angle? Well, it's either in this direction. So theta 7 pi over 4. Or I can put it in this direction. Or theta is equal to minus pi over 4. Now just take note, we can do a full circle and go around. So there's an infinite number of answers. But between 0 and 2 pi, or between minus pi and pi, there's two possible answers already. All right. Calculate the angle theta in the third quadrant. So now I'm in the third quadrant. I know cos is negative there. So what's my reference angle going to be? Second function, cos of a half. And that's going to give you pi over 3. All right. So what is this angle? Well, my reference angle is pi over 3. So my angle is pi plus pi over 3. So that's an angle in the third quadrant. So it's 1 pi plus 3 or a third. So it's 4 pi over 3. Now, also, you could go in this direction. I don't want to confuse you too much, but you could have also said it's pi over 3 short of minus pi. Because if I go all the way in this direction, I go, I've got minus pi. So if I stop pi over 3 short, I get minus 2 pi over 3. So there we go, two-thirds in that direction, another third. There we go. So there's some options. And the last one, calculate the angle theta in the third quadrant for which tan is positive. Now, tan is positive in the third quadrant. Now, take note, if you look at the reference angle, second function tan, on your calculator of 1 over root 3, you're going to get pi over 6. But this angle in the third quadrant, it's pi over 6 is positive. We're happy with that. And if you type into your calculator tan of pi over 6, you're going to get 1 over root 3. But I'm in the third quadrant, so it's this angle. So it's a full pi plus pi over 6. So theta is pi plus pi over 6. So it's 7 pi over 6. All right. So that's how we look for specific angles. So with radian measure, everything you did with degrees, you must be able to do with radians and that is the essence of it so you've got to relook at everything you've done with degrees and going forward using radians when you look at trig functions derivatives all of those things you have to think in terms of radians and you cannot keep converting